Hi, so I have another broken TV here. This one doesn't turn on. As you can see, it doesn't even light up the standby LED, so it's time to take it apart. I'm going to start by taking all the screws from the back cover. Here we have the main board and the power supply. Before poking inside, I'll make sure the primary capacitors are discharged. Now I'll check the fuse. I don't have access to the bottom of the board, but I can check if the input AC is connected to the diode bridge rectifiers. So, the fuse is ok. Usually, I also do a quick check of the diodes. Everything appears ok in the high voltage side. Nothing feels warm to the touch. I'll connect it to the mains and see if we are getting the expected output voltages. I've just connected the AC line. It's jumping around. That is not normal output. On this line, we actually get zero volts. These jumps in voltage kind of feel like the controller is going into short circuit protection. I'll disconnect the AC line and discharge the capacitors. Now I'll quickly check the diodes on the secondary of the transformer. Ok, you can't always trust the value you get when you measure a component in a circuit, but a short circuit doesn't feel right on a diode unless it's parallel with a relay or something like that. And these two are also shorted, strange. This doesn't feel right, so I'll take the diodes off to be sure. I'll start with this one, and I'll measure it off the circuit. Yeah, this one is completely dead. And after I disconnected the previous one, these two are not short anymore.
and that's because these three diodes were connected in parallel, which is really unusual. You shouldn't use these diodes in parallel because they are always mismatched, so one of the diodes will do most of the work, and because of that, that diode will get hotter. One of the characteristics of Schottky diodes is that the forward voltage actually gets lower as the diode gets hotter. That means the diode that gets hot because it was doing most of the work will get even more mismatched and get an even bigger share of the work, eventually failing. You can actually see this phenomenon. This diode will get hotter because of my fingers, and as you can see, the voltage drops. And even though there are two very similar diodes on the same package, the voltage is slightly different between the two. So, looking at the datasheet, it gets even stranger, because the controller is rated at 50 watts. Yet, this diode alone should have been able to handle that load, and those 50 watts are split between the main board, where this diode failed, and the backlight, which appears to be fine. This leads me to believe the diode just died, not because it was overloaded. So, in theory, the two remaining diodes should be more than able to take the load alone. I've completely removed the failed diode, so I'll check if it works. Ok, I've just connected the AC line, and the supply already has that faint buzz characteristic of switching converters, which is a good sign. We also have a standby light, I'll turn it on. The voltages appear to be stable, and the diodes are cool to the touch. A bit later, the voltages are still stable and everything is still cool to the touch, so I'll consider this fixed. I'll disconnect the AC line, discharge the capacitors and put everything back together. It works, 